I just time when I speak, please listen carefully. You will lose nothing by listening carefully. Nothing. First, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. That's in John chapter 13, verses 1 through 20. As I said earlier, the water pot and the Passover preparation, that's in Mark 14, verse 12 through 16, Matthew 26, verse 17 through 19, Luke 22, verse 7 through 13, all clearly record this. Book of Matthew and Mark do not mention the name of the disciples. Luke chapter 22 verse 7 and below tells us that Peter and John met the one carrying the pitcher of water and prepared the Passover. They really didn't understand Jesus' heart. While observing the Passover, there must have been a better seat. Are you greater or am I greater? You don't even understand the word. Didn't I evangelize you? How can they be like this? Jesus will be arrested soon. He will be beaten. He will be spat on. Oh, you said you can foresee. So in few hours, people will cover Jesus' face with a cloth and punch him. How painful would it be? Oh, they say you know all things. So I just punched you. Who am I? These underlings, these servants of the high priest, hurling fingers and blowing fists at Jesus. Jesus foretold all these, yet the disciples did not believe him. Let alone consoling Jesus, who is about to be caught on the Passover. They were arguing who is greater. How astounding is this? Luke 22, verse 24. Under the imminent suffering of the cross, the disciples were fighting who was greater, who was lesser. This was a true tragedy. And that moment, Jesus said, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Jesus talked about living forever. Yet now, all of a sudden, he's talking about dying. At the Jewish feast table, all the seats are designated. So the disciples were arguing over who will sit where. Jesus said, when you are invited, sit at the last place. Same when we eat. Not all fish are the same, right? Some is really nice and plump and bigger, and the others can be smaller. If you really believe in the Bible, if you're really a saint, no need to say, please start first. Just take the smaller one for yourself first. You try to eat the bigger one, that's why you tell the other to take it first. Jesus said to the disciples, sit at the last place, the lowest place. This is in Luke chapter 14, verse 14. 
That's why those who treat others is the humble people, and humility goes before honor. Humility leads to honor. But before destruction is the heart of a man, his heart is. That's in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Jesus saw them fighting for better seats. The standard in God's kingdom is different from the standards in this world. The kings of this world is evaluated by their power and they are treated accordingly. But in Jesus' kingdom, serving others is counted the highest. Even Jesus said, even I did not come to be served, but to serve. I've come to serve you by laying down my life to become the ransom sacrifice, sacrifice for you. That is what Matthew chapter 20 verse 28 says. So, during this Passion Week, in midst of the Holy Communion, they were fighting. Where can Jesus rest his heart? Where? For those who lived through both good and bad years with Jesus, did Jesus promise them the kingship? Jesus promised them the kingdom of heaven. That's why it says, endure in this world, for you will become kings. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. In human eyes, Jesus, the King of Kings, look very insignificant. He seems very uneducated, living at the outskirts of life. How broken-hearted Jesus must have been. Whoa, he took the good seat, taking all the good food. That is what they were thinking. Jesus could not take it anymore, so he left. No one was understanding him. Nobody asked why are you leaving? No, or nobody followed him out. He brought in a, a basin of water and tucked a towel on his side. And he says, hey, everybody sit down. Jesus is the king of kings. He is a creator. He is the origin. He is the beginning of all things. He is all for all. In his kingdom, they could not even dare to look at his face. His glory is seven times brighter than the sun. All mankind must bow down before him and never dare to lift up their heads. He has thousands and myriads of angels. How so stupid were the disciples? Did anyone bring the water for Jesus? Anyone to bring the towel for Jesus? Should the king of kings must do all of this? So, Jesus loved to the end. When the disciples must be assisting Jesus, they were busy fighting over who is greater. No way they could fathom Jesus' heart like this. He brought the water, he took off the outer garment, and said, Sit down. Now that you see me doing this, learn from me and do the same. You cannot do this if you don't have the love. The cross of horrifying suffering, and he will bear it soon, in few days. Yet, when this true master, Jesus, is pouring water into a basin and bring it to them, not a single one assisted him. Let alone saying, Oh Lord, I must wash your feet. 
Not a single person said that. How grieved was Jesus' heart? How heartbroken he must have been. John chapter 13, verses 13 through 17 says, As your teacher, I gave you an example. A slave must wash the master's feet, but I do the opposite and I serve you. When he said this, were they sorry to hear this? They were not sorry. First John chapter 4, verse 7 through 21. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. And verse 28. John chapter 14, verse 15 through 21. Chapter 15, verse 10. At our Pyongyang Jiu Church, there are many people who look forward to the first place, to the highest place. But I tell you, please yield all that to Jesus. Look how Jesus obeyed. Write it down, please. Jesus who feels fear and anxiety. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. The Hebrew text says this. Stay here and watch with me. Matthew chapter 26 verse 27 through 38. Please listen carefully as I speak. During the Passion Week, when the Lord was about to wash their feet, one disciple left. When the eyes of the Judas Iscariot met Jesus' eyes, there was a spasm in Jesus' face. The Bible says he just did not know what to do when he saw his face. Because Judas's heart was darker than the night of pitch black darkness. Judas' heart was darker than the pitch black dark night. That's in John chapter 9, verse 4 through 5. In John chapter 9, verse 4 through 5, if you see this, you will understand. Having received the piece of bread, Judas Iscariot went out immediately, and it was night. This is written in John chapter 13, verse 30. Beloved saints, please see how Jesus furnished the upper room. In John chapter 17, and Jesus prayed as a mediator between God and men. Cold sweat running down his whole body. He is praying in trembling voice. But the disciples did not care at all. No one even tried to understand what was going on. Jesus had no place to lean on. He trusted Peter, John, and James. But these three, they were all the same after all. Peter, John, and James, these three disciples heard the voice from heaven on the Mount of Transfiguration. When Jesus saved Jairus' daughter, he did not take others, but he took those three. More than anybody else did, they are the ones who heard the most word of God. 
So what Jesus really wanted was, yes, Jesus will resolve all sins of mankind. He will do it himself. But when he was praying in Gethsemane, the power of Satan, the devil, the red dragon that fell from the kingdom of heaven and all demons from the world instantly mobilized at Gethsemane at the command of the Satan. The first attack was on who? They were to attack Jesus, but Satan's commander did not target Jesus first, although Jesus was there. But to prevent from assisting Jesus, from becoming a shield to Jesus, Satan destroyed the 11 disciples first. But rather than the remaining eight disciples, he attacked the three disciples first, Peter, John, and James. These three, to stop these three from helping Jesus and shielding and protecting Jesus, they were to completely crush them. And you must subdue them completely so that they cannot pray for Jesus. Tens of thousands of Satans gathered to Gethsemane, the center of the earth, the center of Judea, near Jerusalem, to this Gethsemane. They have all gathered. They just could not pray. Everybody was made to fall asleep as if they were drugged with sleeping pills. So Jesus was praying, but he was getting so hard. So he hoped that the three disciples would become his shield, but they were snoring away in deep sleep. Can you not watch with me even for an hour? Stay awake and pray so you will not fall into temptation. So Jesus goes away and pray again. But it was so hard again Then he said resol resolutely because they just don't understand. So he returned the third time and said, It is enough. My betrayer, ha my betrayer has come to seize me. Rise and let us be going together. Right now, please try to fathom our Lord's heart. They knocked out the eight disciples. They also KO'd Peter, John, and James. So now they attack Jesus. How hard it is for Jesus. Even God could not bear it anymore, so he sent angels. But even the angels weren't strong enough to help. As we see that in, in the Bible, in Luke chapter 23, verse 44 to 45, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly than his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down from all over his body to the ground. Must I bear this cross? Father, let this cup pass from me. Father, let this cup pass from me. Take this cup away from me. This is too frightening. This is too terrifying. The fear and the terror were just indescribable. At the brink of Satan, about to burst into clapping, he recovered the birthright. Having restored the firstborn rights of mankind, he was about to go before God as a representative of the firstborns. At this moment, look at you. What good is Jesus, even if he were the Son of God? How pathetic he looks as he praying. He is praying so he can escape from the crucifixion for the sake of mankind's sin, praying that the cup will pass from him. God, what was your purpose of sending Jesus? Now all this was meaningful? Didn't all this turn into vain? Look how pathetically he is praying now. So yes, Jesus failed the first time, Jesus failed the second time, but now at last, the third time, he prayed again for the cup to pass, then he would lose completely. So when the Satan was about to clap in joy, the third time Jesus prayed, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Can you imagine how much the host of angels rejoice and oh, how God was pleased. 
To the point, the voice came from heaven. This is my son. So he sent angels again to release Jesus from the weakness and the agony. Please look at this scene. In order to fulfill the word in the scriptures, Jesus did all of this. Please listen carefully as I explain. Please don't miss anything when I speak. 11 p.m. From the upper room of Mark John, Jesus took his beloved disciples, crossed the brook he drawn while singing hymns, and went toward Gethsemane, as written in Matthew 26, verse 30. That was 11 p.m. So the next day came. It was a few hours later, around 1 a.m. Judas knew the secret place where Jesus often met with his disciples, right? So they brought clubs and swords. And he brought all the high priests, the Roman soldiers, and Judas said, Bind him tight. Take him away on the guard. Don't lose him. And he came to Jesus and kissed him. Look at this scene. So, where did, ta did they take Jesus? Around 1.30 a.m., Jesus was bound in ropes. And he was dragged to Annas, the father-in-law of the high priest. But Annas did not have any rights to interrogate Jesus. So he was sent to Caiaphas. He was sent in John chapter 18, verse 13. Also in John chapter 18, verse 24. So around 2.30 or 3 a.m., there was an assembly at San Hadrian, the National Assembly in those days. Of the 70 Senate members, 69 of them approved to kill Jesus. Yay, to kill Jesus. When they were taking this vote, of the 70th members, only one person did not approve. 69 of them approved. Jesus said all of this knowing this already. In human history, there was a never a time like this when they woke up senators to have a meeting at National Assembly 2 o'clock in the morning to kill someone. Jesus was a creator of all men, the Lord of eternal life, the Lord of our salvation. How could creation tie up the creator? See, the spiritual world was so dark. It was so dark. How are they going to bear their own sentences to come? So frustrating. So publicly, in John chapter 18, verse 28, about an hour later, so right before 4 a.m., they moved Jesus from the National Assembly to Pilate, the Judean governor. 
They had finished the first interrogation. They interrogated Jesus. So Pilate still sent Jesus over to the King Herod, the Tetrarch, because he was a king. King Herod liked to see Jesus because of his signs and miracles. And that is in Luke chapter 23, verse 3 through 7 and verse 12. So it was around 4 a.m. Then King Herod, around 5.30 a.m., sent Jesus back to a pilot. And around 6.30 a.m., he handed over Jesus to be killed. Then, the National Assembly announced a death sentence. The supreme command of the nation, Pilate, who can kill or save at his wish, sentenced Jesus to death. And from there, they stripped down Jesus, put a scarlet robe on him, pressed down the crown of thorns, beat him with reeds, kicked him, punched him. It was so frightening. So, from Pilate's Plaza all the way up to the hill of Golgotha, Jesus carried this wooden cross. The women were weeping, and Jesus said, Do not cry for me, but cry for you and your children. What a shocking word this was. Beloved saints, when he reached the hill of Golgotha, underneath the wooden cross, they punched Jesus, they kicked Jesus, calling him, you bastard, trembling upon this holy body of Jesus with the filthy shoes that have been to the bathrooms and all unimaginable places and with the nail made by the blacksmith so coarse like teeth of saw they pounded these huge nails into Jesus with the huge hammer and those nails broke through his skin. The nails tore apart his tendons and the red flesh was driven into the cross. When they nailed him to the wood, his skin, his veins, his tendons, his flesh were all driven into the wood together. All this for whom? Haven't we sinned with our own hands so many times? The crown of thorns, six centimeters long. Only when the tree is three years old, it can have these long thorns that will not break. Were they careful, worried that it would hurt Jesus? So mercilessly, so brutally, they just pressed it on him. Both hands and feet were nailed. Hanging him on the tree. Now, would they be careful like they would do to their kings? Several big men would lift up the wood to make the wood stand on the ground. And his body will dangle with the wood as a cross sways front to the back. When his body moved with the cross, what will happen to the places where he was nailed? The cross sways backwards now, and what would happen to his head with the crown of thorns? When you go up to the mountain, you slip on a slippery moss or a rock and fall on your butt. The moment you land on the rock, you will black out and you will feel like your eyes will pop out. Like that, when they drop the cross into the hole on the ground, would they be careful lest it will hurt Jesus? No, they would not be careful. They just lift it up and just threw it down and bang. The moment the cross hit the bottom of the pit, Jesus fainted. Haha, ha, look at you. Oh, king of Jews. Try to come down. 
I don't know if you have saved others, but save yourself now and then I will be with you. Someone shake their heads and cry out, kill him, kill him, he deserved to be killed. When Jesus said, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. Oh yeah. Do you think Elijah will come down to save you? Where did the 12 disciples go? Where did they go? They have all run away. They all fled. His blood was pouring out profusely. Wherever the thorns pierced through from those hundreds of holes, blood was squirting, flowing into his eyes. So he cannot open his eyes. He did not have, have his hands to wipe his eyes. Through the hundreds of holes from the crown of thorns, blood is pouring out. It's going into his eyes. The blood covered his face. The blood drenched his body. The blood drenched the wooden cross. And he poured down to the hill of Golgotha, into the middle of the earth. Our Lord's blood on the cross fell upon this world. How could Satan know there would be anything in his blood? I will preach about this tomorrow. But not even the host of angels, not even the Satan knew, because only God and Jesus, only two, had a secret meeting. Father God, to save humanity, you sent the word of eternal life to me. Sure I did. But they are not receiving this word. So now I will die on the cross. This word that saves human race, this word of eternal life, should I take this and come to you, God? What can I do? Without Satan's knowing, only God and Jesus, just the two of them knew, without even the host of angels or all the creation that ever lived on this earth ever finding out. I will die today. God, what should I do? My beloved son Jesus, never, ever bring it back. Don't bring it back. You must not bring it back. The word to save mankind, hidden from the host of angels, hidden from Satan, hidden from mankind. Hide this word in your blood. So when you die, when the blood drops fall, don't let Satan ever find out the secret of your blood. So God gave Jesus a gag order to the end and never spoke about it. Dear saints, I will preach tomorrow. But how can the blood of Jesus on the cross save our sins? What is in the blood? Because of the precious blood, we are forgiven of our sins. But what's in this blood? I will preach about this mystery tomorrow. I have only covered three pages right now. I will make sure to copy all of this. So you must know this until you enter this kingdom. So please write this one thing down. You, have, you must know this part. Look at the mystery between God and Jesus. Jesus did not just go away. He left after putting everything hidden away from Satan. Had Satan known this, would he let Jesus shed his blood? Without shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Would he ever realize that his head was being crushed? Satan did not know this. 
And all this because Jesus obeyed. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through suffering. He learned obedience. That is why he became the source of salvation to all those who obey him. Write down Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 through 9 Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 through 9 Next, obedience of Jesus Romans 5 verse 19 And Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 through 8 And third, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 through 8 So so if you obey the word please look when you cry out to God give me Holy Spirit give me Holy Spirit please will God say oh you're asking for Holy Spirit and give like that God does not give like that please repeat after me when we obey God's word in all things even if I don't ask with legitimate reasons one by one God gives the Holy Spirit say Amen if you believe let us read Acts chapter 5 verse 32 and finish for today please come back tomorrow tomorrow I am going to write on the board to show what is in the blood on what Satan did and explain what the Bible says. Together, did you find it? Acts chapter 5, verse 32. And we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. See, all you have to do is obey. Obey. All the mankind, none of the mankind ever knew. Only God and Jesus knew this. If Jesus has taken the word back, then there will be end for the humanity. But he hid it in the blood and let it drop upon the earth. That's why the Lord said, Kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field. If they're hidden in the field, you must dig them out. This was a parable, but Jesus was not saying just anything because he was bored. Caiaphas, he said, Are you the Son of God? Hey, you speak clearly. Punched him in the face. He went to Caiaphas and the king was sent to Annas. Then let's take him to Pilate, to King Herod, and then back to Pilate. Jesus could not sleep even for a second. He was dragged around like a dog and he was stripped naked on the cross. The paintings are just abstracts. His body was completely exposed in the broad daylight. Imagine this. Even in our world, in the news, they are completely stripped because they are accused of corruption in politics. Although they are wearing physical clothes, they are stripped down completely. I take this time to say this, but those who prepared for a wedding this time without realizing it, uh, okay, just go ahead and do it. It will not be counted as sin to you because you do not know. The pastors must take the responsibility. So what can we do? Because they did not know any better and, not, and prepare for a marriage in the, during the Passion Week. So don't be heavy laden in your heart and please never do that such a thing. You must be shocked for you didn't know or they didn't feel right. You did not know any better, right? So you already sent out all the invitations, so no choice. Right? So tomorrow somebody will be getting married. 
And so I said, well, the person did not know. Okay, let the wedding go on. I mean, already all the invitations have been sent out. You cannot extend the wedding date, right? There's no choice. So by God's grace, uh, please get married tomorrow. And church will not detest it even a bit. I'll be the same. If you were to do that after listening to the sermon, then you would not be accepted. But this time you did not know. So, so for next time, let us avoid this. Saying that this is a passion week. We must not do this during the passion week. Only then God will be pleased. How our Lord was crucified for our sins when He was God Himself. If we have any conscience, we must live by it. Saying that the Lord, I am supposed to be there, but you are there for me. If you cannot cry about it, you should at least have conscience, right? That's why I say don't seek pleasures in good times or make meeting engagements. He is beaten, scourged, and torn apart from me. Should I be walking here and there with money and having fun? Not during the Passion Week. Jesus is suffering on the cross for my sake. You should be dealing and thinking about money at times like this. That is simply not acceptable in our conscience. Let us sing. Hymn 141. Deeply reflecting on the lyrics.
기도합시다. Let us pray. 고난 주간 다섯째를 맞이해서 On this fifth day of the Passion Week. 오늘 주님께서는 어제도 증거했지만은 Today our Lord one of the twelve disciples Judas Iscariot was swept away by the mob of Satan in order to betray our Lord and the Lord was praying in the garden of Gethsemane winning his heart with all his strength in order to resolve the sins of mankind for the sake of the nation and Judas, who knew of this secret meeting place, brought the high priests, the scribes, the soldiers, and Pharisees. And he stood in front of Jesus. Oh, what kind of eyes did Judas give Jesus there? But Jesus felt so sorry for Judas Iscariot. It was so pathetic that Jesus' heart broke with compassion and pity for him. So that to his disciple, whom he loved, are you betraying me with a kiss? Are you betraying me with a kiss? As Jesus was saying this, his heart was torn apart. But he still endured the pain because he was still his beloved disciple. Although Jesus did not say anything further, in Jesus' heart, he waited for Judas to repent so that he could forgive him. How his love burned for Judas. But Judas just did not know such a heart of Jesus who wanted to hold him to the end. He just could not fathom his heart. Today, let us, let none of us have the heart like Judas. Help us to fathom Jesus' heart and obey to God's will until we enter into your kingdom so we will never break God's heart with our disobedience. Please make us into people who are zealous only for our life at church for you. Oh God, you tried so hard to recover the lost firstborn in every way possible and you recovered and never let him go again. But the devil tried to snatch him away but in, he failed in the end. For Jesus hung on the cross and took the birthright for God. He took the ultimate birthright of the kingdom of God to the very end. Our living God, this birthright that is a profound mystery between God and Jesus through the Bible and based on what was preached we have come to some understanding now so God please work through your word to make sure that not a single person here will ever lose his first one right by despising it or neglecting it by your work of life, let everyone here stand according to the order of the firstborns. Bless us to follow the steps of suffering of our Lord 2,000 years ago and fathom our Lord's heart deep inside us so we can raise toward the very end. Please help us so that we will never be stingy when it comes to studying your word, evangelizing, or giving offering. And until we meet again tomorrow, may none of us fall out. So please, Holy Spirit, help us. During this Passion Week, our Lord took all of our sins. Now our children are in trouble. Our businesses are failing. There are conflicts between husband and wife. Please bless us so that we can commit everything to you, Lord.
I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all will flee, all the darkness will be driven out, all will be driven out from the homes and businesses at once. Thank you so much. I pray all these by lifting up the name of our Holy Savior, Jesus, in thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you so much.